Hello, everybody. This is going to be a quick video over uh, conformity and its motives. So I'm going to share my screen with you so you have a visual aid. All right. Boom. Here we go. So to start off, let's talk about the two basic types of conformity. We've got public conformity and private conformity. Public conformity is also known as public compliance. Right, so public compliance is when we modify our own behavior to match that of those around us so we conform, but we don't necessarily adopt the attitudes of those around us. So, for example, um, and in general, conformity is changing your own behavior to match those, that of those around you, but public conformity and private conformity. It differ in the extent to which you change your attitude. So public conformity, public compliance, that's changing your attitude without necessarily changing, sorry, changing your behavior without necessarily changing your attitude, right? So, um, you know, let's say that, you know, you get into a elevator, right? And everybody's facing the back of the elevator. Well, we all know that right now it's normative to face towards the door, right? Well, if you walked in and everybody was facing towards the back, right, you may find yourself inclined to face the back like everybody else is doing. Now, you may not come to believe, hey, when people ride an elevator, they should face the back. You may not come to believe that. And if you don't, then you publicly complied and that's all you've done, all right? <clears throat> Private conformity, on the other hand, is not only changing your behavior to match um, what everybody else is doing around you, but you're also changing whether or your attitudes towards the behavior. You're changing whether or not you think that was the right thing to do. All right. So you might, again, going back with that example, you walk into an elevator where everybody's facing the back of the elevator. You walk into the elevator, you might, yes, absolutely think, or you might absolutely feel that urge to face the back of the elevator. But you might also, if you're privately conforming, you might also become, uh, begin to start thinking, well, maybe this is what people are doing now. Maybe this is what we're supposed to do, all right? <clears throat> if you start changing your attitude, then you're privately conforming, all right? So you can have one with the, out the other. Certainly you can have public conformity without private conformity. You can have public compliance without private acceptance. Um, but very frequently, if you're privately complying, if you're privately accepting that the behavior is appropriate, then you're probably going to publicly conform. You're probably going to publicly comply. All right. But the principal difference between the two is whether or not you change your attitude towards the behavior. Do you think that the behavior that you conformed to is the right thing to do? Now, <clears throat> We conform for at least two reasons. One, uncertainty. Sometimes we walk into situations and we don't know what the right thing is to do, right? Um, think about those of you who have ever gone to a different country, right? <clears throat> you don't know what the customs are there. You don't know what people, what is expected by other people of you, right? Um, and so what do you do? You tend to look at those around you and do whatever they're doing, right? In fact, we even know this uh, you know, through Proverbs like, you know, when in Rome, do as the Romans do, right? <clears throat> so when you're in these other cultures, when you're in these other places, you don't know what to do. You are uncertain about what to do, right? So you conform. You conform because you don't know what the right thing is to do, and so you look to other people, all right? The other major reason people conform is because they, they want to belong. Specifically, they don't want to be rejected. And coupled with that, they don't want to look foolish. Certainly, if they were to look foolish, um, then that might lead other people to reject them. So, we don't, so very often, uh, one of the motives for conforming is wanting to belong. If all of your friends, and I know you've probably heard this story back when you were in high school, if all your friends jumped off the, uh, uh, the cliff, would you? That's a bit of extreme, but 
think about uh, instances where your friends all, you know, decided they want to go to a restaurant. Well, you may not have originally wanted to go to that restaurant. Well, when they all went, did you say, well, screw them, I'm going to go where I want to go. Some of you very well may have, but think about it. Oftentimes we decide, you know what, I'll, I'll go ahead and go. It's not really where I want to go, but it's fine. All right. You're conforming. All right. Now, really quickly, that brings up the fact that in our culture and in many independent cultures, the word conform or conformity is treated like a four letter word. And what that, that means, it's treated like a bad thing. All right. Conformity in America, in most Western countries, is treated like a bad thing. All right. We almost treat it like the devil. Right. We treat it like, oh, you're conforming. Don't be a sheep. Right. <clears throat> um, but conformity does a lot of good. So keep that in the back of your head. Con we conform for good reason. All right. Um, is it always a good idea to conform? Absolutely not. But conformity serves a lot of good functions. So keep that in the back of your head the whole time you're learning about conformity and listening to my videos about conformity and obedience. Even. So the two motives we conform are uncertainty, where we don't really know what to do, and belonging, okay? So we, when we walk into a situation where we don't know what the right thing is to do, we might conform. When we walk into a situation where those that we uh, wanna be friends with or those that we care about, when they're all doing something, we do what they do, all right? So those are the two reasons we tend to conform. Now, when we conform because we don't know what to do, Right? When we conform because uh, we don't, we're uncertain about what the right thing is to do, and so we look to others, we're conforming due to informational social influence. All right, Social influence in general is just when others affect our behavior. So in this regard, others are affecting our behavior, others are leading us to conform because others are providing, in, providing us with information about how to behave. All right, that's informational social influence. So we conform due to informational social influence when we are feeling uncertain about what we should be doing, okay? Belonging, on the other hand, is uh, what motivates us to conform to a different kind of social influence. Okay, so again, remember, social influence is when others, the behavior of others, influence our behavior. <clears throat> When we are motivated to belong, others influence our behavior because we want to be friends with them or we want to belong to their groups. So others influence our behavior because we want to do, we want to be similar to them. We want to do what they're doing so that they will accept us. All right. So we've got informational social influence. People are, others are affecting our behavior because they're providing us with information about to behave and that satisfies our desire to to get rid of our uncertainty and <clears throat> so normative social influence is when others influence our behavior because they're uh, by telling us what is expected or normative for that group and in order to satisfy our need to belong we do what is normative to belong and, that, and that's why we conform due to no, normative social influence. Now, the last thing I'll mention, though, is that <clears throat> um, informational social influence and normative social influence tend to lead to different kinds of conformity. So, for example, informational social influence operates in a vacuum of knowledge, meaning you don't know what the right thing is. You don't know what the right thing to do is. So you genuinely don't have an attitude. And so you look to other people for guidance about what to do, right? And so you um, gather what is the right thing to do from others. In that situation, the chances of you privately conforming, of privately accepting that what everybody else is doing is the right thing to do is higher, all right? Because again, you don't know. Right? You don't know what the right thing is to do in the first place. Right? And so when you're uncertain, you look to others for an answer, essentially. You look to others for information about what the right thing is to do. 
and then whatever it is they're doing, you not only publicly conform to it, you not only publicly comply, but you also are at a, you're also more likely to privately uh, privately conform. You're more likely to privately accept. But with normative social influence, yeah, you very well will you you very well are likely to publicly conform to publicly comply. But chances of you actually privately complying and privately accepting that what everybody is doing is the right thing to do, that's unlikely. I mean, think back to the example we talked about earlier, which was, you know, all your friends want to go to, to uh, think a certain restaurant sounds the best to eat at uh, for the evening. You may publicly conform, you may publicly comply and go to that restaurant with them, but you may not necessarily privately comply. You may not necessarily privately accept that, yes, that does sound the best. You may maintain your opinion that this other place sounds the best. All right, and there you go. That's your first video introducing you to the types of conformity, private and public, <coughs> also known as uh, public compliance and private acceptance, and the motives for that conformity, uncertainty and belonging. Now, again, remember, that social influence is simply the, the, uh, the effect others have on our behavior when they guide our behavior in one way, one way or another. And so when we are uncertain, remember that's one of the motives for conforming, we look to others for information. We're, we're, so others are, inform, are influencing us by providing us with information about what we should do, information, which is informational social influence. When we want to belong to a group, other people affect us by providing us with uh, knowledge about what's normative. They're telling us what we should do and what they're going to do, right? And so to satisfy our desire to belong, we try to uh, uh, do as they do, all right? All right, guys, that's it for this video. Um, as always, um, if you have any questions, Please, sorry, I was making sure that I covered everything I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, let me know. If not, then have a great week, and I'll see you next time. Moved all the buttons around.